Okay, so we're going to be um, doing a mutation dungeon run right now for you. And we're going to be talking about my strategy as we do this. It's important you understand how to tank this. We'll do this for each of the dungeons so that you can cover um, all the different mutation runs that are going to happen. But at the moment, this is a mutation two, so not the most difficult, but which is good because that will allow me to concentrate on the guide as we're going through the video today. If you have any questions on specific sections, make sure you pop into my Discord. Discord link in the description below or my Twitch stream. Or, of course, ask in the comment section. We can cover that as well. As always, if you enjoy this video, please do drop me a like and subscribe. I massively appreciate it. And let's get into the footage. Okay, always what I like to do in these kind of sections here is I like to run Sword and Shield and Berserk. Why? Do, uh, sorry, and Hatchet. Why do I like to run Sword and Shield and Hatchet? The most important thing is it's two taunts which have a crowd, which have a crowd ability. Because Berserk has the single best taunt in the game. It's an eight second taunt with an eight meter radius. And it lasts a long, long time once you can do that. And it has a relatively short cooldown as well, which makes it even more better from my perspective. So um, I like to use those things. And then on top of that, I can use Defiant Stance. Oh, getting a bit low here. Let's get the shield back up. Thank you. Pop that. And we like to use Defiant Stance as well, because um, that gives me two of those crowd controllers abilities. So in this kind of area, it's fantastic. I can hold taunts relatively easily and I can keep my shield up the whole time, pretty much other than popping the taunt. Because in theory, what should happen is I could use Defiant Stance, which has the longest cooldown. From there, I could use Reverse Stab to end, sorry, to reduce the cooldown of uh, Defiant Stance. Then if I need to, I can put my Berserk for the next one. And then I put my Shield back up. I've got Shield Bash for any stragglers that are around. And you can see I've already got Defiant Stance back up here, which is a really neat little way of just keeping on rotating around it. And by doing that, you can be an effect tank. So you see, I've lost aggro there. We'll pop it again. Fantastic. Now I'll do that. I'll reverse stab to slow the cooldown. That's reduced the cooldown to sub 30 seconds. My berserk is already back up here. I've lost the aggro there. So we're just going to shield bash that guy. There we go. And I don't even have to dish out any damage here. I can just simply do this. Now, in smaller runs, in non-mutation runs, as a tank, you don't want to be doing that. You want to be putting out more damage. But on higher tier mutation runs, you don't want to be putting out much damage. You want to be having your shield up and staying alive and holding aggro and letting your DPS do their jobs. So from this perspective here, I'm just going to let my DPS do the jobs. I'm going to attack when I think it's safe to attack. But other than that, I'm just going to sit. Now, I've got a debuff on my screen. Can you see that debuff in the bottom there? That debuff has been affected again, but now it's gone. Why is it gone? Well, I've got a perk on my sword and shield build, which is when I do a heavy attack, I, reduce, I remove one debuff. That is fantastic as a tank. Every single time, you want to just be doing a quick heavy attack, getting rid of the debuffs because some of the people on this and this uh, mutation run apply rend which means you're going to take additional damage that's no good make sure you do the heavy attack when you can have enough safe opportunity get rid of the debuff and you're going to be absolutely fine here now we've lost aggro so we need to flip back again you can see what i'm talking about there we're having a nice easy rotation the reason why the hatchet is so good as well especially for this kind of run is the vampiric modifier that from mutation free upwards a lot of the enemies have vampiric modifier means that enemies kind of have like leeching on all of their abilities. They, they um, can retain their own health or start to regenerate health by dealing damage to us. And that's really bad against some of the bosses that can have significant damage up because they can heal themselves quite a lot. So is there a debuff that you can apply in game that will reduce their healing abilities? Well, some people had the thought about, can we just simply drop a um, Oblivion? And Oblivion, if you don't know, wipes out all of the debuffs, or sorry, all of the buffs on an enemy. But this is not a D, no, this is not a buff, a time limited debuff. So when you look at the um, tooltip for Oblivion, it says removes all time limited debuffs. Well, Vampiric, Vampiric is not a time limited buff, so it won't work against them. But something that does work against them is applying another debuff, something like disease. Disease reduces the healing capabilities of enemies. And when you drop disease on them, the Vampiric is actually becoming less effective. So what you want to be doing is running um, this infected throw ability, which is on key bound to my R key. That will produce a poison cloud when they all get close. So ideally, what you want to do is get them all here, get the aggro, get them all together. When they're all together, then pop the infected throw. Use my next crowd control ability. They're close now. Infected throw. Now they're all going to have that, um, that disease debuff affected on them, which means their healing capabilities are much, much lower. And that's going to be a really effective way of just making sure they go down that little bit quicker because you're going to debuff how much they can heal themselves for. Now, not every enemy in the mutated dungeon is vampiric. Um, it's mostly the named enemies, but it's just good to have because it will apply some um, additional DPS to your team effectively. I think one of the most important abilities in here is the reverse stab. Um, the reverse stab is important because sword and shield cooldowns are particularly slow. 
especially Defiant Stance. Now, Defiant Stance is going to be your make or break, your make or break ability in so many things, especially against Scylla. When it's Scylla starts to get high stacks, she can do so much additional damage. And with that additional damage, you're going to feel it really quickly. Now, with Defiant Stance, you can offset that because you get a 50% damage reduction when you apply Defiant Stance at full health. So what I like to do is I wait to like to wait till Scylla gets to kind of eight stacks, 10 stacks if I can. When she gets to 10 stacks, right, pop Defiant Stance now. That almost mitigates completely her additional damage from the stacks. And on top of that, I get to keep her aggro. So a really, really nice ability here. Because Defiant Stance has such a slow cooldown, how can I get that cooldown back faster? Well, I can use the Reverse Stab ability. Reverse Stab reduces my cooldowns by 25% for each enemy I hit. Does that mean if I hit more than one enemy, I get that multiplied? Yes, it does. If you hit four enemies in one Reverse Stab, you get your Defiant Stance back instantly. Now, Defiant Stance is great because it also applies healing when it ends. So that's so good because I can completely chain healing and damage reduction. So I've got loads from here. I only hit one, which is a shame, but you did see the cooldown reduction go on Defiant Stance. These enemies are a bit of a pain because they have that bloody shield up, which blocks a lot of attacks. We'll try to apply the Rending Throw and the Disease Throw. They're good. Shield back up. Sit in the Sacred Ground chat. If you don't know as a tank that you should be aiming towards Sacred Ground all the time, you should be. Now, some healers, not who all healers are created equally. Of course, some healers are very good and you don't have to tell them what to do or, or kind of instruct them as to what you're looking for. Um, but some healers will either be trying to put out DPS because they think that's really helpful to the team, which it isn't. Um, or they will be trying to heal DPS again, which I don't think is massively helpful. You want to be, as a healer, healing your tank. If a DPS goes down, it's an easy revive because the tank should be able to hold aggro. And when it can hold aggro, they can take all of the enemies away. Here we go. I'm going to get, look, so I'm going to pop the def reverse tab there. I only got one there. Really, really, that's a shame. I thought we were going to get three there and I was going to get that quick defiant stance. Oh, I must have got more than one because I've already got defiant back up. So that worked out well. But the healer should be focusing on the tank because if you keep the tank alive, he can hold the aggro. If you, pop, if you do focus on the DPS and the tank dies, the situation can turn bad quickly because can the DPS hold aggro? No, probably not because they probably don't have a taunt ability. They might be able to put out enough damage to hold it for a bit, but not all of it. That's going to be problematic. Healers, you need to be focusing, popping your sacred ground on your tank and keeping your tank alive at all, all costs. It's so vitally important that you do that and not focus on DPS too much. That's not to say that you don't focus on DPS to a certain extent, but only when your, healer, when you, when your tank is safe. I mean, if I have to wait more than, say, like five seconds for a heal, I know my healer's not focusing on me. And that's a real shame when the healer's not focusing on me. I need more than that from them. Lost a bit of aggro there, so we're going to pop the Defiant, take the Reverse Stab, got the cooldown, we've got abilities here, Sword and Shield up, full health, fantastic. My team are also doing an amazing thing for me right now in terms of helping me. Can you see they keep dropping Oblivion on the ground? Well, if you didn't know, Oblivion gives you a plus 15 stamina stack every second or so. It's outrageous. Now, why do you need stamina? You need that for your sword and shield. So we watch here. If they pop Oblivion again, look at my stamina. It just keeps going back up. I'm not attacking. My shield's up the whole time, but it keeps going back up. That is that Oblivion. Oblivion is amazing because it's just going to let me simply keep my shield up the whole time. And it's the single best ability on the game to help tanks other than Sacred Ground, in my view. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Love that. We need to get over here because the boss will keep on now. If you don't come here, the boss will keep on chaining new enemies. So we've got to come and crowd control this boss. We have to get out of the flames if we possibly can. Save your shield bash here, folks, right? What you want to do is you want to CC chain this guy. His potion. We need to... Now... Oh, I missed it. That's a shame. Before he does that attack, you can CC him with a shockwave if you're a hammer user or your shield bash. You need to stun this guy. And by doing that, you can completely CC him down to stop doing this chain. This is quite a bad run because we've got a person down right now and he's going to keep on doing that attack. Now, I've got a shield bash. We should be able to do that. This run's going to pop, and I mistimed that again. That was bad for me because I'm looking around at my teammates here. But the teammates here have got to get these people up. I'm going to have to try and move this boss away is going to be the play here. If I can move the boss away, we'll pop the diseased throw to get that off. We'll move out of the flames. Right, they managed to get him up. Good. So now we'll come back. Don't have a shield bash there, so there's nothing I could do. We just had to tank that. I got rid of the debuff by heavy attacking. Right, now we're getting some damage out. Shield, thought someone would get him there. He's rendered, and he's weakened, and he's diseased. We're going to go ham here with a hatchet because we're going to need to burn this guy down. Come on, team. Get him down. Thank you. Fire Staff is one of those few things that I actually need some gear score on at the moment. Rend. Move up. Very good. Yeah, on this hatchet build, I run the rending throw as well so that we can also rend. So you should have a spear user on your team for the rend. 
But if you don't, also having it on the hatch, it's really good. It's a really neat little way of just applying some rend for your team. You know, a tank's there to stay alive and apply debuffs as far as I'm concerned. You're not there for damage. So before anyone says, oh, why aren't you taking leadership? I mean, look, for the lower tier mutations, you could take leadership. Of course you can. At the higher tier, um, I probably don't. I probably want to run defensive formation to keep my team alive. Uh, and a live team does more DPS than a dead team. So yes, running leadership is more aggressive, but I don't think you need it. Now, that's not to say you can't complete it with leadership build. Of course you can. Um, you probably should have done that. Now, what we should have done here, what I much prefer as a strategy, is not taking the fight here, is to come here and line of sight these enemies. When you come and stand here, all of the enemies will come with this area here, and you can get away from the archers because you've blocked their line of sight, and you can do some real nice DPS there. So don't do what we just did by coming and fighting in this area here. Make sure you come, stand behind here, bring the enemies closer, and then hit them all in a much safer environment. Take the aggro here. Good. So look, we got, so now it's kind of safe, right? Now it's kind of safe. I'll, I'll dish out some DPS here. That guy does not want to get aggro. Now, sometimes that will happen. They just move. That's fine. Even if I don't have aggro here, I can just let my team focus on that guy because they'll be able to kind of stun him completely and just kind of keep on DPSing. And I'll hold aggro on this guy. And that will allow my DPSs to do their job. So don't feel like you always have to get aggro on, an, on all enemies. As long as you kind of leave one unaggroed enemy, your DPS can focus them and you can then hold the aggro and everything else. And that's a nice little way of enabling the DPS on your team to do some good damage without worrying the rest about the enemies. That's a really neat little trick. Make sure you've all washed your hands at the purified area. That's how you're going to be able to activate the Shrining Stone here. Looks like we've done that because I managed to create the respawn point. And then we're going to go to Scylla. We're going to do our first boss fight on this Scylla, which is the hardest boss fight in the whole Lazarus run. Um, Scylla doesn't have Vampiric. I find Scylla a really hard boss to tank. I think it's the hardest boss in the game to tank. Her attack patterns are really unorthodox. Um, she has a lot of change-ups. It's not like the Genesis final boss, which is so easy to read. Get the aggro from Scylla. There you can hold it. DPS, do not stand in front with the tank. You're going to get some big damage there. And with that shield attack, you probably want to dodge it. It's probably for the best. Did she get activated on the orb there? She did. There you go. Now, that orb mechanic will make come, Scylla come here and will also reduce her stacks. The stacks increase her damage output. From here, as a tank, she doesn't actually kind of focus. She does this arcane attack, which means you should be getting in some damage here. So I'm going to go ham here, apply the rending throw and apply the diseased throw for a bit of additional DPS because that will just tick over time. Keep rending. Right, now we start to come back here. Take aggro of Defiant. And I really need to get the reverse stab in. Didn't get it, which is a shame. So I'm going to have a bit of a cooldown reduction here, but we've got shield bash up. Don't stand in front with the tank. You're going to have a hard time. That Oblivion, you see that chat? That Oblivion just let me keep the shield up the whole time. Normally that would, give, that would stun break me. So I'm going to need to attack there because... My stamina was really low, so I can either have the option of getting poise broken or not. Now, what you want to be doing, if you can heavy attack Scylla in between, every time you heavy attack, you'll get your stamina back. and You'll get a decent chunk of stamina back, okay? So she's at 10 stacks here, so now it's time to pop Defiance Dance, so we can tank that. Defiance Dance, cooldown reduction. Oblivion's going to let me get my stamina back, so we're just going to keep the shield up the whole time. Very good. Now she's at 15 stacks. You can keep on doing that. We're going to attack through that because we had low stamina. Keep the shield up. There you go. Right, we've got 17 stacks there. Not bad at all. Again, damage coming in here. So now we're going to pop. Go ham, go ham, go ham. Rend, constantly rend. Whenever you get the rend and throw back up, pop it. Because that's the best thing you can do for your team by applying extra damage to Scylla here. So it's very, very safe here to just hit Scylla. She's just going to do that architect, arcane attack. Now she's coming back, so we're going to move out. She's coming back for us. She's ready to damage. Heavy attack if I can. Can't do it there. Got hit. That's fine. Heavy attack now. Oblivion's going to let me keep my shield up. Excellent. We're going to shield Basher here just to make sure we keep the threat on her high and make sure we don't lose it. Another heavy attack to get the stamina regen in between attacks. See, that's what you can do. If you time this well, you can heavy attack in between her attacks. Just help keep your stamina that little bit topped up as well. Okay, try and heavy attack here. Bad timing. Bad timing by me. That's okay. DPS get behind. Okay, shield Bash. We missed it. So, right, they moved on to there on only 12 stacks. That's a little bit easier than we wanted. She's going to come and use her big attack here. Okay, move out of this arcane explosion. Oh, they went for it. Very nice. Good, good, good. And that's basically how you tank Scylla. So, I think the main thing to take away is um, you want to heavy attack in between attacks to keep your stamina high. If your team run Oblivion, bear in mind that's going to keep your stamina high and you can sit there and tank more so than you probably could. And when you do the stack cleanses on the orbs, you want to um, go ham at that point, put out as much DPS as you can because realistically you're safe. She only will do some arcane attacks and she'll kind of do that from wherever. How do I like to do this next section? I'm just telling the team here how I like to do this next section. I like to run a 2-1-2 formation with tank mid. So two on the bottom here doing DPS, two at the top doing DPS. There we go. I really like to run... Oh, what are you doing? There you go. The 2-1-2 formation. 
because they can wipe out the enemies here and then we can group up on middle. Why is it kind of important to do that? Well, from here, I should be able to just tank this damage here, right? I should be able to keep my shield up. Healer can heal me. And from here, we can just keep on having our shield up the whole time. They apply very weak damage and they apply, even more importantly, weak stamina damage. Okay, you can see their attacks there doing very, very little. If I get an opportunity, I will drop the shield to, reject, to um, recover my stamina. Now, the important thing here is your angles, because if you, you don't want to get your back turned to the archer, if you get your back turned to the archer, it's bad news, okay? Because the back turned to the archer means the archer can hit you in the back. So I'm constantly trying to keep my angle so that the archer's in front of me, or at least to the side, because the shield has a 180 block um, kind of radius around it, okay? Um, is the way to think about it. So as long as the archer's on your side, it's not too bad, but as soon as it starts to get on your back, that's a problem. So my stamina's kind of at half here. I know what I'm going to do here. When I need this, all right, it didn't, I didn't need it. But what I would have done is I would have popped Defiant Stance. You can see Defiant Stance kind of recovers about 50 stamina for me whilst popping that armor mitigation down. So really important. Okay, and from there, we'll then do the reverse stab. I've got two there. So you can see my Defiant Stance is pretty much back up. With the shield up, you can block the fiery explosions, which are important. We're just holding aggro here for the team. Two guys down the bottom there are fine. Got another guy coming over here. We'll wait for that. So we lost aggro on that guy. So we're going to pop that there. And then we're probably going to shield bash this guy just to make sure we have aggro on all three. We're fine now. We've got Oblivion up. We'll pop the reverse stab for the cooldown reduction. And we're just chilling now. All Gucci, all Gucci. The shields will, uh, sorry, the explosions will consume quite a bit of stamina, about 25. So you just have to watch out for that. You don't want to become poise broken because if you take that damage and then you move into the explosion, it'd be quite bad. And you can get some explosion chains. But you can see here, this is relatively easy. The 2-1-2 formation is definitely the best way to go because some people run the healer, the tank up top in a 2 formation. I don't understand the reason for that because the tank, you don't want tank for DPS. Um, 2 DPS should be able to quickly wipe everything out very easily. And the tank can just easily stay alive down here with good positioning. As long as that archer doesn't hit your back, you're going to be absolutely fine. So it's really, really important. Now just, again, when you are tanking, don't go near those two pillars. You can get kind of stuck behind them. I've been in positions there where the whole group are stuck have kind of stuck me there and I just kind of have to keep my shield up and not much more I can do uh, and your, your your natural inclination will be to spam dodge to try and get out and that's kind of terrible as well because dodging will um, simply use up and consume a lot of your stamina so get ready for potion and if you if that does happen to you but the best thing to do is try not to go too near those pillars and you shouldn't get stuck in stay away from corners stay away from keeping up your back okay this area is quite easy we're just going to move up here and take the boss aggro is the most important because these apply fire there are a couple of small Lazarus defenders down there um, that we'd like to get there you go we've got it with a shield bash but nothing we can do here your team should focus on tolos okay while you hold asterisk's aggro because tolos is the one that can put out the most damage here unfortunately my team are probably the not most experienced in this run this is just a public group i just managed to get a relatively cheap mutation to run on and i thought it would be a good opportunity for this video you can see i've got a debuff there so i'll take the heavy attack for the cleanse and i'm just hold this aggro you see i'm not too worried about tolos's aggro um, at all we can just leave that I can come and get it every now and again, but on reality, if it's focused on a DPS, that's fine. DPS should be able to dodge the attacks and just put it down. Main and Enzi, they're doing a really good job. Other than that, we're fine here, just chilling. Move out of the soul fire when you can. At this kind of level, it's not too bad, um, especially because I've got four ruby gems in. I've still got one pearl in. Um, I put the pearl back in the other day by mistake. I probably should have kept the ruby in because that cost me 400 gold. But yeah, if you don't know, chat, there's two main modifiers, I think, on servers for this dungeon at the moment. It's either additional void damage or an additional fire damage. If you have additional fire damage, you want to be running rubies on your armor. If you have additional void damage, you want to be running amethyst on your armor. That will mitigate those two things. Here, we'll just pop a, another hearty meal just to make sure I'm fine. And from here, we want to run all the way up to the top. Don't, don't take any of these guys. There's no point taking a fight here. It's going to slow you down on the timer. We need to get sub 35 here. Make sure you get the respawn point. Keep moving up, right? Don't take this fight here. I want to keep going all the way over there. Don't fight, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight. Good. Take the dodge there. That slinge burns kind of slow me down a little bit. We're going to take this fight behind this corner here. We're going to do another line of sight thing. Stay here. And we're going to gank them. As soon as they walk in the door, it's like, hello, baby. Right, here you go. Come in. Pop that defiant stance. We get all that aggro. Reverse stab. Only hit one. It's a shame. We take the bash there just to get the group. And then I'm going to also berserk just to make sure I have aggro here. I don't want the team to really start to struggle a little bit. That would be bad because we have some explosions. We've got some archers. You can do this here, but this is a really effective strat. We'll take the reverse stab to get my defiant back. Team's doing fine there. I'm going to block the archer for the guys. Make sure I get archer aggro because he can really F up your team. The team do have to focus archers a little bit. 
By doing this, I'm just going to hold the archer's aggro and let my team focus on those smaller guys that are easier to take. Good. Now, Errol Dow, we can just come and focus this guy. This next section is a bit of a pain. Um, it's hard to pop a crowd control ability that will get everyone. So what you want to do is apply some threat straight off the bat. Apply that disease. Come over here. We'll get Demos's aggro with the Berserk. Rend it. But no, we won't do him too much damage yet. So it's not too important. We're sat in the sacred ground. You want to be in this lovely sweet spot here, which is between the sacred ground and oblivion. This kind of makes you indestructible as a tank, I would say. This is what I call the infinity zone. You should not be dying here because you have infinite stamina regen for a, for a long time. And with sacred ground as well, a lot of health. So if you can't die because your shield's not down and you can't die because your stamina's up, you know, what are you going to do? You should not be dying in this area. So this is the best way to really tank those high level areas is make sure you can have someone do both of these abilities and you're going to be really, really safe. It works so well for Scylla as well. There's lots of lots of time here to just get some additional DPS in because it's not too bad. Now from here, if you stand here, you should get all three aggro. I missed the Avenger there, which is a shame. We'll come and use a shield bash there just to make sure we get it. There we go. That's all three. Up the loop. DPS here is absolutely fine. They can do enough damage here. I'll just make sure I keep this guy's aggro so he doesn't bother the DPS too much. Take the heavy attack for the cleanse. I'm too heavy. That's an absolute fatal error. Make sure when you come into the dungeon, you're not over encumbered already. I've got not much because that could really, if that was a mutation five run, we'd probably be dead right there, um, which is a shame. DPS doing fine here. That guy moved too far. No, we did manage to get the aggro. See, if you stand in this spot here, you can get all three enemy aggros pretty quickly. Don't have your back to any one person. Heavy attacks on this guy to get his shield down is the best way to go. With the shield down, you can power out some nice DPS. They're focusing Archer. I'm going to go and help with a Rend and a Diseased Throw. And we can just go ham here because this guy is going to get absolutely stunlocked into place. What do we get? Ancient Bane, Healing, Jagged Armor, Break of Strength. Wow, pretty good. Last little challenge here before the big boss. Not much of a challenge. There's one boss here. Again, you want to be using that CC stun because he's going to keep on raising his arms. But we're a little bit late to the party. We're going to Rend, Disease, come in. CC stun here. Well, as soon as it raises, Shield Bash. You see the Shield Bash stops that move. And then that's good because that's one of its main vampiric moves. Okay. That's definitely the way to go. As soon as he does that animation, you want to be popping a shockwave with your hammer, a shield bash with your shield, stun him into position. Happy days. Volt kick with your spear as well will work really nicely well. Okay, now we're on the final boss. The final boss is the worst boss in the entire game. Looks the coolest, plays the worst. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to do this boss. I presume you've looked at Lazarus boss strategies, but basically you need to get these orbs here. When the boss moves, when the boss fires a laser at you, Pop the first one there, pop the first, the second one there. DPS, DPS, DPS. Now, what I probably should do at this point is respec, because um, I'm running 350 con, 87 strength, but I've got a convergence K con. Did have, we'll pop another one, because we've got plenty. Okay, and with that, you can just run DPS. And that's a really, really good way of doing it. It's just because you don't need damage mitigation here. You know, the boss doesn't do much damage output. I would, I would really respec, go to something like 300 strength for the grit, and just try to burn this boss down as fast as you can. That would be important because you're trying to beat this under 35 minutes. So we will do from here. That's why I'm not respecking just to save me the 200 coin. But if you're doing higher level mutations and you're going for gold, you need to respec here and make sure you do that. Say so no one's going to got this orb, so I'm going to go get it. Dodge through there. I don't understand how you can apply bleed to this attack, but you can. Okay, so luckily my team's left this so I can demonstrate. You've got to break the shield here. When you're breaking the shield, you pick up that orb. You come and pop it into place here. Got hit in the back. Thank you, mate. And you can see the orb is now there. And that will be important when he does the laser attack. You'll pop it there and that will break his laser chain. Really important. And at this point on, what are we doing? Well, I like the spear because I can constantly apply rend, even at this like, kind of low strength level. That will be important because the rend will increase the damage output of my team. I'm shifting, sorry, I'm uh, dodging between attacks because when you use an ability, I've got one of the perk abilities where when you use an ability within two seconds of a dodge, you get additional. Go, Enzi. Thank you. Left side. Left side. Left side. Left side. Left side. Should have gone left side first. Keep applying that rend for the guys. One more rend. Rend on the hatchet. That's big. Go a little bit ham on the last bit. Nice damage. Nice DPS. Okay, we're going to need that orb back. So I'm going to go and get that one because they're probably going to need that. Okay, so you can see here the boss has applied two poison areas. Um, as you should know by now, if you're doing mutation runs, you shouldn't stand in those. They'll do you big damage especially at the higher levels. That's okay. Um, they're relatively easy to avoid. You just want to be standing here, popping all of the boss aggro that you possibly can. Uh, sorry, the boss damage that you possibly can and trying to just burn this boss down as quickly as you can to make sure you get that 5x or 6x multiply so you can try and get gold. Okay, so the laser attack here, you should just be able to come and tank. You'll hit your uh, sacred ground guy. 
Your healer should pop the sacred ground there. You can all stand in and just burn this boss. We'll get it done within the 35 minute timer. Very good. Still shooting the laser. Okay, there you have it. So that's how you do a full mutation run there. So I'm just going to show you the full build here so that we can look at that as well. We'll leave the expedition. Show you the full build that I like to run and would highly recommend. Tower shield is an absolute must, especially for Scylla. Her stamina damage will be so high. If you have a round or kite shield, you're going to really struggle. Tower shield is a million percent the way to go there. Stamina management is absolutely key in this dungeon. I've given you lots of tips during the run. But you really do need to be running a, a uh, tower shield to get the most out of that. Make sure you come and get the faction missions as well. There's some easy tokens right there. And I always pick up the next one as well. I've kind of got 3,000 tokens there, which are needed to buy the next ones. Um, I like to run 340 con or 350 con. Before anyone says, why don't you run more strength? 250 con's enough. You don't get any benefit. Your job is to stay alive, tank. That's your job. If you want to go run DPS, run DPS. Tank's job's to stay alive. No one's going to thank the tank if they die. Really, they're not. So I kind of go 340 con minimum just for the 17k health pool. I think that's so important. Um, and then from there, my amulet's kind of holding me back here. I didn't, I thought, I didn't know that the expeditions would work on average gear score. And as I had a really good legendary amulet, I thought, well, I won't bother with that one. I needed to upgrade my earrings. That's what I really went for because I was still using ill-gotten gain. So at the moment, it kind of sucks a bit. Um, yeah, I could upgrade my spear, which I probably will. But actually, when you look, if I go back to my there, yeah, I'm at 609 for most things. Now, before you think, chat, should I just upgrade all of these equally? No. I mean, there's a waiting to how this works. Basically, I'll show you an image on the screen right now from someone from Reddit who did a fantastic job of explaining how this works. But basically, your weapons contribute the most to your average expertise. It's not like Destiny 2, if you've played Destiny 2, where each item's worth the same. Here, your swords are worth more. They're worth about 43% of the weighting. So you always want to make sure your swords have the highest rating. Then I think it's your chest and helmet and things like that. Image up on the screen so you can see that. And there's also a calculator to tell you how to get the most out of your Umbral Shards. The calculator will be in the description below. Again, that was a fantastic Reddit post, and I'll credit the person in the description below. But use the calculator to see how you can get most mileage out of your Umbral Shards to increase your average expertise the most. It's your average expertise that matters rather than the individual items themselves. So for instance, you don't have to run this 609 hatchet. I could go back to this hatchet if I wanted, which has Keen and Hated, 588 and i'd still dish i'd dish out a little bit less damage but not as much as you would think because it still keeps my average expertise at 606 and this is really the rating here that matters the most okay um in terms of stuff yeah ruby gems as well i just chose chose to upgrade my void bent one because it keeps luck which is good and two for invigorated there's no pve there's no resilient sorry there's no crit damage in pve so resilience is a bit of a dead perk but invigorated is really good and just for um High con armor. I mean, if you have better armor, for sure, run it. But my tank armor for PvP doesn't really suit. So I just chose to run Void Bent. I think there's always going to be mileage in using Void Bent. Of course, if you can get heavy gear with um, Ancient Ward, that's going to be the best. But what matters the most is average expertise and then the wards rather than anything else. So if you're just looking to get the most out of your mileage on Umbral Shards, I would run Void Bent. Uh, in terms of sword, Curiosity Greed, which drops in Lazarus, I believe, is best in slot for tanks. Keen and Keenly Fortified, just to keep you um, more fortification, and then Hated, just to help you keep aggro. Uh, hatchet, I haven't got a great hatchet. I mean, I've mostly been running um, the Genesis hatchet when I find it. Yeah, Edenil, because it has Keenly Jagged to apply some bleed, which is just a bit of an additional DPS. A refreshing War to help my refreshing cooldowns. Angry Earth Bane is dead. It's going to be good for Genesis, almost best for Genesis. Um, in terms of jewelry, Infinity Crystal is, unless you have something better, amazing because it's divine and health and fortified. So if, I don't think there's better than that. If you had a legendary version of that, fantastic. But you'd be paying 100k probably. Smooth Bone Ring, if you can get it for Hearty for the additional stamina and keen awareness. Keen awareness would be important for things like Curiosity Greed. And then I like the Black Metal Stud because it gives me Purifying Toast. So if I get loads of debuffs, I can pop a potion to lose one. Give me Despise for the additional threat refreshing and the constitution so i think that's a fantastic earring as well and then on your shield what perks you're looking for um sturdy yes refreshing evasion's good refreshing would have been better but refreshing evasion's fine i will dodge every now and again sturdy is the one i'm really looking for just to take the less stamina damage and i like accelerated defiant stance because it's important once i pop that defiant stance i want to make sure i constantly position so that my dps are behind the enemies and i'm in front and with your shield up you move very slowly so having that Accelerate Defiance Arch just lets me move that a little bit quicker, which is going to be important. Okay, and then let's have a look at the builds themselves here. So here's my Sword and Shield build. Now, before 
Anyone says, why don't you take leadership? Again, I've mentioned, I feel like at higher level mutations, you need more defense, you need to stay alive. Taking leadership can work in the right setup, but I think for a um, catch all, it's better to take defensive formation so that you reduce damage to your allies. Um, and I think more importantly, it'd be nice to take leadership. Look, I think leadership is much better than defensive formation, but the amount of perks I'd have to invest in here, the amount of points I have to invest to get leadership, is not worth it because, for instance, I would rather have one with the shield, recuperation, and all of these to give me additional uh, stamina reduction. Stamina is the most important thing to manage here. So um, in terms of abilities, I've already mentioned I take reverse stab mostly for tactician, which means on a successful hit with reverse stab, all sword cooldowns reduced by 25%. You hit four enemies, that's 100% cooldown reduction. So it means you get your abilities straight back. That's important because Defiant Stance has a 45 second cooldown. So you have to wait a long time for that. Anything you can do to get that back quicker is going to be massively, massively impactful. Defiant starts, of course, with restoration for the healing and final countdown for the 50% damage mitigation. So fantastic. Shield bash to as a taunt and uh, with intimidating bash to give me that additional threat. I'm not worried about the damage. I'm worried about the greatly increased threat to really help in group section. So that's important. Um, and then I take all of this. Um, I do on the left hand side just to enable me to get to reverse stab have to take empowered stab but that's fine because I also highly recommend freeing justice to give me every time I do a, a heavy attack I lose one debuff it's kind of like a free cleanse um, so that pairs neatly with empowered stab and then I have to take opportunist to just get me to tactician I have no other choice here tactician being the most important skill perk there um, why don't I take precision um, well I need I freeing justice is better than precision to me why don't I take counterattack? Um, I'd rather invest the points on the right hand side of the tree. I feel like those are all more important than taking counterattack. And why not Achilles heal? Again, because I feel like the synergy between empowered stab and free injustice is, is more important. On the hatchet, what am I taking? Uh, full berserk chain with defy death, which is amazing. If you die, if you take lethal damage, you don't actually die. You get immortality for three seconds and then your healer can save you and you can pot up. So this is really good. If you are super close to death and you think you're going to die, get your hatchet out. This is, an, this is a free life, potentially. That is an S-tier, S-tier perk. Uh, full Berserk Chain, only because I really want the uninterruptible Berserk there. Um, Frenzied Purge, if I pop that when I'm low, I can remove my, most of my debuffs. Um, a bit of Fortify on Fortifying Strikes. Increased damage for all enemies by 10% with enemies within 5 meters. That's good if I have a big group. I can just dish out some damage. Um, realistically here, I'm just trying to take some additional perks because I don't think there's any points because I don't think there's much on the right hand side I would otherwise take. Accumulated power for the empowerment and a bit more um, damage. But really the important abilities on the right hand side, rending throw. So I apply a rend by 10% for 10 seconds. I can increase the value of that rend by um, 50, up to 15% if I use it from targets 8 meters away. So you've got to try and do that from distance. And then finally, second wind, if I hit an enemy with an active debuff, I get the cooldown reduction of 20%. So really good because most of the enemies are going to have active debuffs. And then infected throw, this is the one I'm talking about to combat vampiric. Um, disease, re infected flow inflicts disease for 10 seconds and that reduces their healing efficiency by 30%. Really good. And it also weakens them. Um, increasing that up to 15 seconds for enemies below 30% 30 health. 30 health and in creating this three meter radius distance around them. So that's what I showed you earlier in the video. I'd like to taunt, get all the enemies in, throw that infected throw to get them all diseased. That's going to be really good and weakened as well. So nice synergy. I'll take the extra crit, crit chance. That's always quite good. Um, nothing else here I would rather have. You probably could take exploitation. Um, but again, that's kind of damage dealing stuff. Yeah, not too important. Probably adrenaline rush would be quite a good one to take, actually. You could think about taking that as well. And that's probably the full. Two, two weapon setups there I'd like you to see. Okay, so I think that's probably it for the Lazarus tanking guide. We'll do one for Genesis and we'll do one for Dynasty when those um, corrupted, sorry, when those uh, mutated dungeons come around as well. So you can see the full guide there. Um, but that's probably it for now. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop me a like and subscribe. Check into Twitch so you can see me do my tanking runs in person itself as well. And until next time, stay safe, everyone. Keep rocking. Much love to you all out there.